It was a meeting with from it was at Jay whatever had a meeting with Fat Joe and Big Pun at the time. Oh yeah, and they came oh, strapped geez. up, and then Jay had the little kids in the building just uh, so the kids wouldn't air it out. Wow, that was smart. All I remember, <laughs> Jay Z doing the Matrix in the room. <laughs> After the fight in Carbon, Source Money's diss record and the kidnapping of DJ Who Kid, which I covered in the previous two videos, Pun told Who Kid that they'll drive to the offices of Rockefeller, the same day the kidnapping happened. He wanted to confront Jay about that diss record and find out if there's indeed beef between both camps. Pun apparently yelled at the staff, asked them about Jay, found out that he ain't present and created a big scene before leaving. Jay-Z then got the message from the people in the offices and was shocked to hear what happened. He apparently didn't even know what was going on. They told him that Pan was on a rampage and that he's trying to find and confront him. Knowing that Rockefeller already had an altercation with the terror squad in Carbon and that Dame Dash, the co-founder of the label, got hit multiple times with a champagne bottle, he wanted to prevent the same thing from happening again at all costs. Tried to avoid them and to not get in their way while simultaneously trying to find a safe and indirect way to tell them that there's no beef and that the source money record wasn't about anybody. Jay was still working on his upcoming album Volume 2 Hard Knock Life, still trying to get a platinum plaque and have a commercial breakthrough, trying to build as many relationships in the industry as possible, especially with those that are more successful and popular than him. Like DMX for example, who was one of the biggest rappers at this point. His album It's Dark and Hell Assault went platinum in just one month, and multi-platinum in the months that followed. And there was another album on the way the same year called Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, which also went multi-platinum. Jay was featured on the song Blackout, and DMX also had a verse on Money Care Shows, which was on Jay-Z's upcoming album. So Jay then went to DMX's listening party to celebrate his success and the upcoming releases, and also to meet new people build relationships and also listen to DMX's new album. As luck would have it, he encountered Cuban Link from the Terror Squad, who was out there by himself. Now, at this point, Pan was on a Jay-Z hunt, searching him everywhere, trying to find and confront him, to see if he really wants beef. But Cuban Link wasn't as much of a hothead as Pan back then. So when these two met at the party, they had a cool, relaxed and mature conversation about the Sauce Money song. Jay tried to calm the situation and convince Cuban that it's all love. Nobody on Rockefeller was looking for a beef. Jay-Z pulls me to the side and tells me, yo, yo, Q, um, yo, tell, tell your mans and them that that record wasn't for them, man, you heard? Yo, I mean, Jay, Jay pulled me up to the side and told me, yo, that wasn't even about them, that this, that, 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 that. Not more of an apology, but more just putting me on point, like, yo, that shit had nothing to do with that. And uh, I go, I don't even know what's going on, my nigga, but um, I mean, they feel a certain way about it, you know what I'm saying? You know, I heard it, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like, you know what I'm saying? But he was like, yo, tell him it's nothing like that, man. Tell him it's nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I said, I said, yo, they feel a certain type of way. You know what I'm saying? I told him just like that. So they feel a certain type of way. He was like, yo, man, tell them niggas that shit was a photo, man. You know, don't even think it that way. And, you know, what? surely, you know, he told me, yo, tell them niggas, yo, he's not about to what happened. So I go back and I tell, you know, these niggas, yo, did y'all hear about this song? He said, yo, them niggas tried to get ass. They tried to tell it was amped up already. So I said, I tell him, he gave me that, man. And, you know, I went and told him. There was nothing, you know what I'm saying? But uh, they still felt that way, you know what I'm saying? So Cuban Link comes back from that listening party to report what just happened. But Joe and Pan went buying it and thought that he was lying to save his skin. The Terror Squad was still working on Fat Joe's third album, Don Cartagena, at this point. But they were also touring around and promoting Big Pun's album, Capital Punishment. Pan and Joe still wanted to find him, even after Cuban Link explained them Jay's side of the story. Hope that they can catch him on tour or during a show. And that's exactly what happened. Jay performed on the Luke tour in Chicago. Pan found out about it and used this opportunity to approach him. There was another show date that we was at a show and Jay-Z was also performing. And Pan knew that Jay-Z was there. So um, because of the altercation between their camps, you know, he stepped up to Jay-Z to see if there was any beef or any problem. Then Negus saw Jay-Z again. Uh, and that's show. And he was chasing Jay-Z around the couch. Hunter Joe was chasing Jay-Z around the couch. And Jay was like, chill. It all happened in Jay-Z's green room. He was relaxing before coming on stage. Pan was supposed to perform there too, 
But I guess Jay either didn't know or didn't think much of it, cause he had already spoken to Cuban Link and clarified that the song wasn't about them. Everything I'm about to tell you has to be taken with a grain of salt, cause we only got statements by people who weren't present in that incident. There were only three witnesses in this private conversation, Pan, Fat Joe and Jay-Z. Pan of course passed away about a year and a half after this incident. We never got his side of the story in an interview. We only heard from people repeating what he allegedly told them. Fat Joe doesn't want to speak on it cause it would reignite the beef. He never mentioned this incident in interviews. He was once asked about it in November 2001, right before Nas dropped his Jay-Z diss record Ether. People leaked the original verses of the unreleased version online. I did a whole video on this, which you should definitely check out. The guy who did the interview read out the lyrics in front of him and asked him for his opinion. Call yourself a gangster, but you were begging for pardon that night in Carbon when Terror Squad flipped on your squadron, tried to front on their checks till Pun put a gun to your chest. Fat Joe responded by saying that he's looking forward to hear the diss track, while being a little surprised that Nas just made him part of the beef. He then added that anybody can get it if they really want beef with him and he shall ask Jay-Z about that part with the gun, cause he doesn't want to speak on it anymore. And we all know Jay-Z won't ever speak on it. Only thing he'll do is make a couple of phone calls to correct people, like how he did with Noriega when he confirmed the rumor of Pun hitting Jay-Z with a bottle even though he wasn't there. All we're left with are rumors and vague descriptions of what went down, cause Big Pun told Cuban Link and his wife what happened but he avoided the details. And what they said is this, Pan and Joe met him in that room to ask him if there was any problem, and if the source money disc was about them. Next thing you know, Jay got scared and chased around the couch by Pan, while screaming for help and begging him to chill. They made peace, and that's it. I think they had a meeting with him in a, in a, in a room, and they told him, no, let me talk to you for a minute. And just Pun told me he was chasing him around the couch, like, you know, Pun started wilding. You know, I remember how Pun used to get with the psycho shit, with the demons. He used to scare everybody with that shit. Like the demon shit that he's in him. Uh, so I know how I get. Joe and Pun went to meet him inside a room. And, uh, you know, Jay was, you know, I'm a track star inside the room, oh, yeah. right. <laughs> around the couch. They came out the room and they chased Jay-Z around the couch. You know, that, that, that Pun and, and Joe came back and told me that. And my brother wouldn't lie to me. He came back and said, yo, wait, we wait, had so that nigga running. We had him running around the room. They chased uh, Jay-Z around the couch? Yeah. And they came oh, strapped geez. up and then Jay had the little kids in the building just so uh, niggas wouldn't air it out. Wow, that was smart. All I remember <laughs> was Jay-Z <laughs> doing the Matrix in the room oh, <laughs> by the couch mm. and Pun chasing him. Wow! Pun chased Jay-Z. And Joe talking shit. So he said, uh, you know, that Jay was like running around the couch and say, yo, what do you mean that like that? You know, whatever. No, no punches were thrown at that time, but you know, that's a story my brother told me, so I go with it. We heard stories of Jay putting kids in the lobby so that Pun, Joe and the Terror Squad wouldn't shoot up the place. Other rumors suggest that Jay got pistol whipped by Pun, beaten up, a gun pressed to his chest, the story that Nas told us, yelled at, insulted, humiliated, emasculated, the full package. There are thousands of rumors, and most of them are probably made up. Some could be exaggerated or misremembered versions of what Pun told his friends or what eyewitnesses have seen. They may be true to some extent, but we'll unfortunately never get a clear breakdown or explanation for it. Jay would hurt his reputation if he ever spoke on it, and Joe refuses to talk about it. So it was like a secret thing on records. Or was it, it was like, no, records, everybody and it was, was like, beef. Niggas knew, beef. though. Right. Niggas in the industry the knew. Niggas knew. I don't know about the industry niggas knew what was going on. Just people I heard, I heard so though. many stories. I can't talk was... about that. Anyway, let's address some of the rumors that are floating around. Rumor 1. Big Pun hit Jay-Z on the head with a bottle in Chicago. This rumor has been debunked by Cuban Link and Pun's wife. Jay-Z performed as if nothing happened after that meeting. And so did Pun. Nobody had visible injuries. Pun went in with Cuban and a few other guys and went to Jay-Z's green room. And as fast as they went in, they came out. And, you know, Pun came out and said that was no problem. You know, they squashed and it was all good. You know, Pun performed and... And Jay Z performed, and he even let me. You know, cause I was I was dying. I, I needed to see Jay Z perform, so uh, he let me go on the side of the stage, and I see him perform. Why would you make peace with someone who just hit you with a bottle? Most people say that incidents happened in Carbon. We covered that in a separate video. Rumor two: Pun threw bottles and different objects at him, but missed. This is false too. 
There was no bar in the green room. No bottles to throw. Rumor 3. Jay-Z tried to punch Fat Joe, but missed. Pun got mad and chased him around the couch. People think this is true due to a song lyric on his album Yeah Baby in the year 2000. The desert or the shoddy, whatever you the body that chose to be the dumb nigga at the party. These lines have nothing to do with Jay-Z. I mean, they didn't even meet at a party, they met on tour. And this is also not about that night in Carbon. Cause according to Cuban Link, Jay and Pan didn't meet that night. They didn't even know if Jay was there. Too much Bacardi started speaking dumb, then you tried to snuff Joe, must have been Puerto Rican rum. The incident that Pan addressed here happened a year later, in 1999. It was about a fight in a club in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where Fat Joe, Cuban Link, Tony Sunshine and a few other Terror Squad members clashed with the owner of an Italian club, his family and friends. It was the Puerto Rican parade in Connecticut. We went over there because of Pun. And because we trusted this guy. We didn't care. We went up there. We went up, we went up there because of Pun. Pun was the only guy that didn't go. Cuban Link, right? The guy, the, the, the main king then, who's treating us like a king, right? He got his wife with him, the nana. The guy accused Cuban of trying to fuck his girl or whatever. Cuban Link bought shots for all the ladies in the club and one of the Italians got mad because one of those girls was his wife. He slapped the shot off her hands and the drink splashed onto Cuban Link. That quote unquote dumb fella at the party started the fight out of nowhere. He was drunk, aggressive and looking for a fight. Whatever, you the body that chose to be the dumb nigga at the party. Too much Bacardi started speaking dumb. I said, my brother, what's going on, my nigga? You know what I'm saying? You slapped that shit, that shit got on me. Said, I don't give a fuck, nigga. Nigga, get the fuck out of here, nigga. I'm from Brooklyn. That nigga told me that shit, but like in my face. I think Cuba punched him in his face or something. No, he knocked like him that. out. He knocked him out. He punched he knocked, him in the face. Knocked him out. Face, knocked him out. Now, he set everything off. Now we go from Puerto Rican parade, we just performed, to 5,000 guys in the club jumping us. It's like 10 of us against 5,000 Literally 000. 10 of us. Literally 10 of us. With no, we got our ass. 200 what? Feet. Listen to me. We got our ass. What? Like, I mean, I don't know how we get last. Right? Because we fought, the, at the very least, a thousand people. The whole fucking club turned on us. Yeah, towards the end, they pulled out a thousand hammers on us. Those too. was the, the fake BMF of the air, like, they ran this shit. Nah, and, they, and everybody was fighting. And everybody was fighting. Yeah, and everywhere you look, we was getting stomped out. Ten dudes on one dude, twenty on another dude. <laughs> just, no, everybody got beat up. Fat Joe, everybody got beat up. Everybody got beat up. Everybody. Like, everybody got their ass Cuban Link and some other Terror Squad associates fought till the end until the same guy that started the whole fight pulled out a gun. Tony Sunshine was lying under a sink crying and begging for the Italians to stop, cause they were about to beat him up with him up. Fat Joe got punched and ran away while the rest of the Terror Squad was fighting. Then you tried to snuff Joe, must have been Puerto Rican rum. We put up the tones in, 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 in Pun's block, right? Pun rolls over the floor like a, like a, like, like a movie. With a Mac in one hand and say, what's up, twin? What they what want, What are we doing? Twin? What they want, twin? What are we doing? Like, fuck you. Fuck you, nigga. Because the shit happened because of him. This guy wanted to smoke so bad in the Bronx. With the, he could not believe he got beat up. He was in the middle of the street screaming with machine guns. Fuck that. What? What? <laughs> He rolled on the floor like Magnum P.I. He literally rolled on the floor when we got there with the machine guns. Like, Yo! Who the fuck wanted twin? They was telling people they beat up that Joe in the terror squad. Man, they could and they did. Jay-Z wouldn't have the courage to punch Fat Joe. Let's be real here. I mean, Pun and Joe together were like a thousand pounds heavy at that time. Jay-Z was a featherweight in comparison and overall not known to start fistfights out of nowhere. Anyway, rumor 4. Jay-Z was threatened with a gun, which Pan pressed against his belly or chest. This rumor is supported by three songs. Root Boy Salute of the Terror Squad album in 1999, You Was Wrong of Yeah Baby in the year 2000, and once again in the song 100%, which I already mentioned in rumor 3, but this time we're talking about a different verse where he might have addressed the fights with Rockefeller. Cause he mentioned his Rambo knife, which he pulled out during the club fight in Carbon. Pun had a Rambo knife. I was there. You know, Pun he pulled out a Rambo knife. That's a drag that you grab normal. But make me grab the Rumble and put some motherfucking stabs on you. 
I'm known for bouncing thurks from the tunnel to salsa clubs. This could be a reference to him chasing people from Rockefeller out the club. Cause he was tackling and fighting multiple people that night. Some rumors suggest that the promoter and owner of the club got mad at the terror squad for starting the fight. And they allegedly didn't get the payment they were promised. Either because of Jay not performing or them ruining the party. The line that supports the rumor of Pun putting a gun to Jay-Z's chest comes right after that. This would be in line with what Nas said on the unreleased version of Ether. Try to front on their checks till Pun put a gun to your chest. Don't matter, put the chrome to your powder. On Root Boy Salute, he actually mentions Jay-Z by name and says, Let me find the next motherfucker disrespect that Joe the Dog Carter, and I'm not the chicken nigga like Sean Carter. He'll do you like Sean Carter, aka Jay-Z, and pull up with guns. That's right, I'm a B there with my guns, throwing this block. So this could be used in support of the rumor of a gun being involved. In Chicago, when Pan and Joe approach Jay-Z and chase him around a couch. More interesting lines can be found on the second verse of the song You Was Wrong, in which he says People use this verse to confirm the rumors of Pan pistol whipping Jay-Z. And then he says, too quick to blast, some fellas talk shit and dash. This could be a reference to Jay getting chased around the couch and screaming, I didn't mean it like that, in the green room during the Luke tour. We are talking about a man who beat up his wife with a Mac-10. So, if you can pistol whip the mother of your children and kidnap a DJ with an Uzi, then I don't think it's beyond your capabilities to threaten your rivals with a gun. Another quote-unquote piece of evidence for many people is Nas's unreleased Etherverse, which Fat Joe refused to speak on when he was asked if those lines are actually true. Cause Nas said the exact same thing as Pun, they were all very close, so it's not unlikely that he told him about that meeting, cause Nas had his own list of issues with Jay. I mean, they were beefing with each other. Joe didn't shut those rumors down when he was asked. He could have just said no. This was right before he squashed his beef with Jay. The only reasons why he didn't give an answer are either because the lines are true, because he didn't want to ruin Nas's punchlines on his diss song, or because he lost to create controversy. Nas could have also just exaggerated that part about the gun to make Jay look even worse. I mean, it was a diss track after all. It's possible that Fat Joe asked him to remove those lines from the song because they're either untrue or because he doesn't want to add more fuel to the fire, now that the beef is squashed. Rumor 5. The meeting took place because of that fight in Carbon. Pan and Joe didn't get their promised money after Jay-Z refused to perform that night. They allegedly forced Jay to pay them $15,000 and the chasing around the couch happened after he refused to pay. They forced him to write a check and afterwards they squashed the beef. People use the line on Ether as an indicator for the rumor being true. Try to front on their checks till Pun put a gun to your chest. Try to front on their checks. So according to Nas, it was about money. This story could be true, but it's not really in line with what Cuban Link said. The way he told it, it was more about Pun wanting to ask about the diss track and see if he really wanted beef with him. It could have been a combination of all those things that have transpired before that incident. Pretty sure Pun didn't just forget about that fight. Rumor 6, this incident happened in Jay-Z's Rockefeller office in New York. And there's another source saying it happened in Jay-Z's 4040 Club, also in New York. But that rumor is made up, cause the 4040 Club opened in 2003, three years after Pan had passed. So how the hell is Pan supposed to chase him around the couch when he's dead? And it wasn't in Jay-Z's office either, cause Pan told Cuban Link and his wife that it happened in Chicago during a tour. The last rumor is a full breakdown of what happened, posted by someone who claims to have worked there. I would take this one with a huge grain of salt, cause this could have been written by some random troll on the internet, who's just looking for attention. He said Pan and Joe came there with like a dozen people who forced everybody in that green room outside except Jay-Z. They even pushed his Hawaiian bodyguard outside and he couldn't enter the room. Cause the people who came with Fat Joe and Pan blocked the door. The witness didn't see what happened inside cause he was outside as well. Nobody could get in there, not even the bodyguard. He said he heard Jay-Z scream and run less than a minute after they closed the door, trying to call his bodyguard for help and begging Pun to stop. 
At that moment, the bodyguard tried to get in but was once again pushed back. Fetcho and Pan were both yelling, but they calmed down eventually. And then the witness didn't hear anything else for like 5 minutes. I guess they were speaking in a normal tone. It wasn't loud enough for the people outside to hear. Pan and Cho then came out and walked away with their team. The bodyguard then stormed inside and all of a sudden the witness heard Jay-Z yelling. Most likely at the bodyguard for doing such a terrible job. And that was basically it. The story may be true, but could also just be made up. Who knows? I'm not saying that I believe it, but it's not unlikely that it transpired in a similar way. Yeah, I know we got surrounded by 90 of them the other day.